I don't know how many times I've listened to this track. I'm getting goosebumps listening to it right now. So of course it is the amazing Teardrop by Massive Attack. Come with me on a journey. Let's dive deep into it. Let's look at the samples, the synths, the secrets that went into making this amazing track. So it starts off So we've got this classic heartbeat beat. It really does act like a heartbeat. It's very steady. It doesn't really change. They add a few bits and bobs on top of it. There are no big drum fills or anything. It's just there like a beating heart, just propelling everything along nicely. So what are the drums? So on Who Sampled, there's just one sample for this track, which is this drum break. It's by Les McCann, it's called Sometimes I Cry. So this is what I've got. So basically, we've just got one bar looped and we've got a nice bit of compression going on. So if I take off all the processing, so I added a bit of EQ, I wanted to boost the kick and then compress it. bring up the sound of the hats, glue it together. But you'll notice that the original, there's a lot of crackle. Let's just listen to it from about here. Which is really a, quite an integral part of the tune. And I believe they just sampled it from the vinyl. In this case, I wasn't old school enough. I just got it from iTunes. So I had to add in a bit of artificial vinyl. So I used this uh, retro color by RC20 Retro Color just to add a bit of vinyl noise. And I use my class, my trusty Decimort. It's quite subtle, but I'm just trying to get closer to the sound of a classic sampler. But that does have a difference if you're listening on decent speakers or headphones you'll hear the difference. Subtle, but it's noticeable. And then the vinyl crackle. So that's that. Then we have some more drums backing these up and you'll notice that there's a drum missing. There's a kick drum missing in, in this. Boom, boom. It's just boom, boom. So how do we get this? I just sampled the tune. So I just took the sample, so I just literally took the first kick, put it in a simpler and just added it in. I think I also, yeah, I low pass filtered it because it had a hi-hat in it. I think that's more or less it. If we listen back to the original, I think there's other drums reinforcing it. So I just added this kick and I backed up the rim with another rim shot. So let's just hear it with this kick without the rim shot. Let's compare. I did try a little bit with the, with the pitch. Like, I could pitch that down a bit. But it doesn't sound quite the same, does it? I'm not quite sure, but what I thought they did is probably reinforce that with another rim shot. So I just got this rim shot. These extra drums, we've got this beefier kick drum backing up the main drums. So all together sounding like this. I'm fairly happy with that. We do have these effecty sounds and this is somewhere I kind of drew a blank. Uh, if you have any idea w where these come from, like I'd be very happy to know. Oh, that's up. It's, it's almost like a horn. It's almost like a drum, but it's got like a definite note, like a pitch to it. So that's the drums in the beginning. We do get a few more layers later. So then the next big sound is, of course, the beautiful harpsichord sound with a nice volume fade up. And the crackle is such a nice element, actually. It's weird, like you would never think it really, but the harpsichord coming up in volume gradually, it's coming through this crackle. So it's almost like, it's almost like the harpsichord is sampled. Like 
I think I, I used to think it probably was sampled. Like it's not clear where the crackle's coming from. So we've got this fairly simple pattern. I think it's called an ostinato, this kind of thing. And I've just got a utility automating the pitch coming up. It's just this simple pattern. So we've got an octave, A, but the main melody is. Very simple, but sublime. I, I absolutely love it. I think it works so well. And I love this, I probably mentioned this before, when there's a repeating element like that and then the chords change around it, the context of the changing chords changes the thing that isn't changing, if you see what I mean. I absolutely love that kind of thing. So we've just got this slow volume rise until the piano kicks in. And the basic pattern does change a bit so this the, the original pattern it goes then we have a pattern where it's just the first half looped and then we get the end at the end of 12 i think if i'm right And I love Massive Attack for this, not just being, I'm like a slave. When I make music, I tend to be a slave to 16 bars, four bars. It has to be a multiple of four. And they don't, they're not that. And we'll see it in a minute with the piano. So they've just got 12 bars because they actually drop in the vocal at four bar 41. So with me, it would always be like at 33 or maybe 49 or 17. We don't have a lot of changes We've got basically this pattern and then we have a pattern where it goes back to alternating, but it's just sublime. It works so well and it's so lovely with the, with the piano. So as we listen, just keep an ear out for how the harpsichord and the piano are working together. So then we have the beautiful piano chords. So I wanna give a big shout out to Ixi Music. It was from her video that she learned the proper chords. It's a really nice video. She's much more delving into the theory side of things. Definitely after you watch this, head on over if you wanna get more into the theory. So Ixi Music, what chords are we dealing with? So we've got A major, then we have a, D, a G sus two. And then a D, just the fifths, fifths in D. I think this is in protection as well. They don't just play it straight. So we've actually got a kind of threes pattern. To start with, it comes in at bar 29. Why not wait till 33? <laughs> and then it, it just has this threes pattern. Because in the verse, we have a more standard 16 bar pattern where it goes like this. <laughs> I mean, I just love it. It just gives such a cool feeling. Like, you don't know where you are. Like, the music, if it's completely predictable, is completely boring, isn't it? And with this, it's like, you don't really know where you are quite. This is the main chord sequence. Then we have this one. So we have F major. So we're going F, F major, G to A. And then we have a bit of extra business here. I mean, these piano chords, it's just like amazing. Let's say the original. And actually, yeah, there's like an extra pad sound, which I, I got something vaguely similar to here. such a magic in the mix even though I, it wasn't that difficult to recreate most of the elements still there's something in the mix which i can't get <laughs> there's something magical in there with how it's been made before we talk about the vocal 
we've just got this little bass, which is quite understated. And I just recreated that using Diva. This is the Volta skin. Sometimes people uh, don't recognize it. Quite a cool skin. So that comes in here. So let's listen to the original. So before it comes in. Do, do, do. So it without the piano, maybe. I'm not sure if these those are quite right. Before I kind of just had it going like this. Uh, maybe it changes. Don't think it's a massive deal, but I just got this quite subby bass and I saturated a bit, gave it a bit of drive with Decapitator. So without it, it's like this. Not doing a whole lot. So before we talk about the vocal, let's just look at the background. I remember when this album came out, I bought Mezzanine and I was really into it. But I remember reading in the music press about tensions in the band and they kind of alluded to it, but they didn't say exactly what, what happened. But now I've found from this website that basically Mushroom kind of created the track. Yeah, so it started with their uh, engineer and collaborator, Neil Davidge, and Mushroom heard it, one of the members of the band, and worked on it, added, added the piano and the beats. So basically he kind of made the tune and he really wanted to have Madonna singing on it because they'd actually worked together previously. But then when the other two members of the band heard it, they really wanted Liz Fraser. I, I can imagine how hard that must have been. Like it's your tune, it's your vision, and it kind of gets taken over, but <laughs> it gets taken over, but actually turns out to be one of the most amazing tunes ever, in my opinion. So yeah, I can see why that would have been very difficult. I mean, the lyrics are kind of incomprehensible. <laughs> I never knew what they were. So apparently the lyrics are, love, love is a verb, love is a doing word. Fearless on my breath. I always thought it was flower, flower, face so fair. A love is a doom word. So <laughs> I'd be interested to know like what you thought the lyrics were. Did you hear them clearly? I mean, it's such an incredible vocal performance. I just think it's genius actually, but it's not the most intelligible lyrically, but it, but it's all the better for that. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. And apparently I found out that Elizabeth Fraser had been going out with Jeff Buckley, who tragically died. I think he drowned. And this was written shortly after that. So there's speculation as to whether that's, it's, maybe it's about that. And it would make sense to me. Also, uh, the people making American Beauty wanted to use this track. And I think the band basically said, no, I think they, they maybe thought that it, it was going to be a bit rubbish or something. Yeah, and then afterwards, 3D said that was actually a mistake. I have to say, I loved American Beauty when it came out, and I absolutely adore the soundtrack, and there's some quite cool dance tunes that sample the soundtrack. I don't know, I like American Beauty with the Thomas Newman soundtrack. Maybe it would have been cool with Teardrop in it. I don't know, what do you think? So, let's have a listen to the vocal. I got the vocal from YouTube. Some clever person used some trickery to actually basically isolate the vocal. So I sampled it from this YouTube video. I'll, I'll put the link in the description. So I've got the vocal like this. Love, love is a verb. Love is a doing word. Fearless on my brain. I mean, A amazing timbre like the sound of the voice is just so ethereal b the lyrics are very interesting and cool they're not like boy meets girl like average i love you baby like vocals are they and also just the melody of them is so unexpected and it's going from like major to minor it's kind of So we've got the C major there, the C natural, I think you should say. But then when it comes back to it, we have the C sharp. So we start in minor, and then we go to major. So that's C sharp, indicates we're going to the major. 
and we're doing these massive octave loops. I'm just in awe of this track. I'm just totally in awe of it. So let's have a listen um, to my version and then I'll, I'll, fl I'll flick back and forth to the original. And again, beautiful arrangement by Massive Attack. So we have the chords, we've got this like threes pattern of chords, 12 bars, then we drop in with a vocal. We have like a verse and kind of like, not really a chorus, maybe like a middle eight or just like a B section. Then we just drop out, just have beats and some effects noises and we add a bit more percussion. We've got some shakers coming in here. But there's some shakers as well. So we just have a nice little chill out and then we come back into the verse again. And you can hear like how my tune's lacking. Like I've got the piano, I've got the harpsichord, the drums are pretty good, the bass is okay, I've got the vocal. But A, the mix isn't the same and B, they've got these really nice sound effects, which it's just really hard to work out how to recreate that for me. And a lot of it is in the mix and the master, I think. And then we have a, like a different B section. We've got an extra chord here. I think it's a D minor. Again, 12 bar pattern. So this is this three threes type. And again, just chill out with the drums and the bass. Got a little beep sound which follows this the bass. This. My beep is exactly the same, that's pretty good. I mean, it's not a difficult sound to recreate, but I'm quite happy. Then we've got some interesting kind of Abbey sound. Hard to recreate, I, I found this patch. So this is a patch in Diva and it's by the unfinished. It's a preset pack I bought called Diva Oxide. So it's this one, Antelope. And I increased the attack. I might decrease it a little bit. But again, it's not like massively close. The other thing we do have though coming in is a nice bit of reversed piano. This is a nice trick to take a sound with decay or maybe you put a load of reverb on something, then you reverse it and you have it reversing in. So let's listen to the original and listen out for that reverse piano. I think at some point we've added a little open hat. So if you listen. 
this, you can hear it in the background. And there's more subtle percussion and stuff coming in. Water is my eye, most faithful mirror. I like it. And it's just gradually builds and builds. Okay, so coming to an end, just want to do a little plug for a track I made a while ago. And it's, it's one of the ones where I actually lost the project file, so I couldn't work on it. But it's got a really nice vocal from someone I know called Callie. It's on this album, and it's basically my my backing track isn't all that and Callie just improvised this or you know it wasn't like a proper vocal session she just did this vocal pretty much off the cuff but I do have a bit of a soft spot it, it's very much uh, how can I say it? it's a bit of a rip off of Teardrop um, I was definitely going for that kind of vibe so it's a homage so let's have a little quick listen Looking to your eyes I see freedom surprise i mean that vocal is just mad i just she callie's actually my friend's daughter and uh she came around our house and just started singing and i was like whoa there that's amazing uh so callie if you're watching this big up yourself maybe we should do another tune and so it just kind of builds it's, it's quite basic the mix and stuff i wish i could go back to it i wish i could polish it up and change it but i can't <laughs> Anyway, little plug, check it out on my Spotify. Also available on everywhere else. So going back to Teardrop. So then we have this lovely choir-ish sound. I feel like it's some kind of, thought it was a Selena string instrument, but I settled on my, in my recreation, it's not that close, but what I use is a Mellotron choir patch. Their sound is pretty cool. But I think it's just following the notes of the piano. Just to illustrate it, here's my version. And I put some chorus on it. I think it's got a lot of chorus in the original sound. So we've reached basically the end of the vocal. There's a couple of little bits left, but we've just got such a beautiful triumphant section and it's it's always subtly changing, you know, it's not it's just it's just a masterpiece. <laughs> I'm just in all of it. Yeah, so we build up to this crescendo. So let's let's just listen. <laughs> genius isn't it what is she saying i had to look what is what are the lyrics you're stumbling a little you're stumbling a little i mean what do you think it is i mean it's amazing i just don't know what the words are but yeah so just beautifully dropping out again let's hear my version with the piano reverse piano again That doesn't sound too bad, actually. And this nice thing with the piano where we're going dun dun, and you're waiting for this A, because that's the root note, that's the root chord. 
but they're not giving it to you. So it's just creating this sense of anticipation that leaves you like literally wanting more. Brilliant songwriting. And then they leave you wanting even more. They just have the first chord. So if you like this, please give me a like and a subscribe. I don't get my ad revenue from these videos. So if you want to support me, think about joining my Patreon. If you join the middle tier, you'll actually get the samples from that I create when I do these tracks. All right, thanks very much for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one.